All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. This is Aparo's Nonprofit Bites and Insights. These are a free webinar series for nonprofit professionals like yourselves. We invite expert speakers and subject matter experts from all different industries to come and generously share their knowledge and insights with us. Today's webinar is being sponsored and led by Avid Exchange, and we are going to be focusing on AI for nonprofit fundraising and finance. We're going to talk about high level AI trends that we're seeing across companies, including nonprofits, as well as a deeper dive into AI and automation for specifically finance. Um, but before I turn it over to them, a few housekeeping items I want to go over. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as well as our uh, website. All of you attending live will receive a follow-up email from me that'll include the direct link to the recording as well as a copy of the slide deck. Um, any resources that we talk about today, I'll also be including in that email. Q&A and chat box are available for you to use. Um, there's quite a few of us in the room right now, welcome. Um, so if, let's drop the questions in the Q&A, um, that'll help us just to organize. And then chat box um, is available for you to use to make any comments. Uh, so for those of you who are new to Aparo, welcome. For those of you who have joined us in the past, welcome back. Um, really quickly, Aparo is a nonprofit ourselves. We are located in Charlotte, North Carolina. And essentially what we do is we help other nonprofits with all things technology, any technology challenge, need, barriers, we are we are working to help them out. Um, we're also a connector, so we help connect nonprofits with skilled volunteers, as well as corporations like Avid Exchange. And together we help support the nonprofits to amplify their impact in the communities and populations that they serve. You can see here, we offer a wide range of services, and this is to make sure that we're meeting nonprofits where they're at, depending on their technology challenge. Um, so if you'd like to learn more, a great place to go to is our website at apar.org. Um, go into the nonprofit section, and you'll be able to see all of the services that we offer. I do want to take a quick second to mention one of our grants that is open for registration. This is specifically for North Carolina nonprofits in the Triangle area, so the Raleigh-Durham Chapel Hill area. Um, so this is our Mission Possible Award, where one lucky nonprofit will receive a $10,000 grant and up to $50,000 of consulting support to make your technology dream a reality. Um, so really exciting opportunity um, to see if you qualify. I will be dropping the link in the chat in a moment. Um, there's also going to be an information session on April 5th, and the last day to register for this program will be April 12th. Finally, um, these are the various ways to connect with us. So if or when you decide you'd like to access uh, Aparo Help, or if you'd just like to learn more, the best way is to go onto our website to drop in a request. Um, you can also subscribe to our email list and um, stay posted on our uh, um, upcoming programs. My email address is also there for you to use, to ask questions. Um, and then finally, if you'd like what we do, consider writing a short Google review. All right, well, that is it for me. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and go ahead and turn it over to our Avid Exchange team. Rhonda, Natalia. Thank you very much, Nting. That's exciting, that Mission Possible Award. I love the name of that. Well, today we're going to talk about AI for nonprofit fundraising and finance, reducing the risk and increasing ROI. My name is Rhonda Green, and I'm a Principal Solutions Consultant here at Avid Exchange. I've been at Avid for 12 years and actually created and led our payment services division for many years. And prior to joining Avid Exchange, I actually was a longtime former AP manager for a couple of different large corporations um, where we you know, worked on efficiencies and automation. Um, I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague, Natalia Harris. Thank you, Rhonda. I'm Natalia Harris. I'm the senior manager of our solutions consultants here at Avid Exchange. And I've been with Avid Exchange for, it'll be eight years this year. And before my journey at Avid Exchange, I was also in accounting. 
and we didn't have automation. So when I moved to Avid Exchange, I thought, wow, these tools would have been extremely nice. So excited to go through some of the benefits in that today with you all. Thanks, Natalia. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about AI defined, AI and nonprofits, the state of AI and finance departments. We're going to talk a little bit about Avid Exchange and how AI can revolutionize accounts payable. AI defined. So when we think about AI, there's different types, right? So machine learning is, is a big one, and that's actually ideal for finding patterns and relationships within large data sets. So that helps, um, you know, duplicate things that have been done in the past. So extremely helpful in the finance area. We're also um, looking at deep learning, which is similar to machine learning, but for very large and complex data sets, such as, but not limited to, video data. Also, there's natural language understanding, or NLU, which recognizes text or speech input used to process textual data. And object detection, which identifies and locates objects in an image or video, which is used for things like inventory management and improved security. A few more types, we've got object recognition that sees objects in images or videos. It extracts the information from financial documents like invoices and bank statements. So things that are on most invoices, things like the invoice number, the invoice date, the dollar amount, things like that as it relates to AP. Also forecasting, so that creates predictions based on algorithms, and it improves forecasting accuracy. And finally, optimization, which builds models using mathematical logic, and it informs strategy and decision making. So AI in nonprofit, so how is it impacting fundraising? So nonprofits are using AI algorithms to predict donor behavior and preferences using historical information. This allows them to streamline efforts and reach out to each donor with ideally timed and personalized fundraising appeals. Nonprofits can also segment supporters based on their giving patterns, interests, and demographics, which further tailors those outreach efforts. And Rhonda, I want to add with this is AI can help clean and provide accurate data and enhancing campaign targeting and donor engagement. So for many nonprofits, finding ways to utilize data to streamline fundraising efforts can be difficult. However, by utilizing AI, nonprofits have the ability to predict donor behavior to help, to help anticipate donor actions such as donation frequency and amount and preferred and preferred cases and preferred causes, excuse me. Also, AI helps nonprofits with fundraising efforts by enabling nonprofits to send personalized fundraising campaigns to each donor. So maybe there's a fundraising initiative that is focused on helping raise money from K to 12 teachers. And with AI, you're able to see which folks are interested in that effort and be able to send them more personalized email communication to help them engage to participate in that initiative. Oh, I love that. Thanks, Natalia. Of course. So next, chatbots for nonprofits. So AI chatbots empower nonprofits by facilitating interactions with both donors and beneficiaries, which delivers instant personalized responses, also handling routine inquiries and streamlining communication. Chatbots also enhance engagement, providing timely information that frees up human resources for more strategic tasks within the nonprofit organization. And all Anything oh, I was just going to say, yeah. anything you had to tell you? Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, we've all, I mean, I'm not, not going to assume, but we've used chat box 
and in our day-to-day and or work environment. But chatbots are a way to help nonprofits facilitate interactions, as Rhonda mentioned, um, directly from the website, for example, donors or volunteers. And chatbots can help streamline and deliver those instant responses. So handling routine questions that you can program the chat box to provide and then also help provide any personalized responses. So ultimately, AI-powered chatbots can help nonprofits free up, free up human resources. So you all, we all can focus on those more strategic initiatives. Yeah, I love that. And I think really that's what technology as a whole, especially this kind of generation of technology is really helping with, really streamline and automate those more mundane things so that you know everyone can really focus on those more strategic tasks. Love it. Yeah. And one more thing on that. I love that you mentioned that, Rhonda, because as humans, you know, we want to interact with each other. So when we say strategic initiatives, it's more maybe personalized individual human interaction and let AI handle those mundane tasks, like you said, Rhonda. So great call out. Absolutely. So resource allocation. So when we think about AI and nonprofits helping organizations really optimize their programming by analyzing data on outcomes and participant demographics. And this also helps nonprofit ad adapt programs to better meet the needs of the communities that they serve. And AI can also predict which areas need more attention and resources based on that historical data and ongoing trends. And now social media, which I think we're all somewhat familiar with, but nonprofits can use natural language processing or NLP, at, which is obviously a type of AI to monitor social media for mentions of their organization, also for relevant social issues and emerging trends. This helps them stay informed and engaged with their target audience. Nonprofit organizations can also use AI to automate content creation and scheduled posts, strengthening brand presence on social media. Do so you have some uh, examples of that, Natalia? Yeah, like an example would be many nonprofits are using AI to help manage mentions, air quotes, of their organization on Twitter, LinkedIn, and other social media channels. So by utilizing AI, they're able to stay informed as well as engage with their audience. So nonprofits can use AI to help create engaging content for their target audience. So for example, they can use chat GPT to write a personalized LinkedIn post highlighting a recent fundraiser. And AI can also help you create an entire month's social media calendar without the hassle of just building it yourself, which would take hours. Again, take the, using your hours for your strategic task, let AI handle the development of these posts, and then you can personalize it if you need to. So you can enter key details and the types of contents you'd like to see, or even ask it to help you create a running list of 10 content ideas to target your audience. You know, I, I love this, and I am so glad that before I retire in a few years that this sort of technology is coming along to be able to help. To me, someone that, you know, really started out in finance back in the Stone Ages where um, we still use the, uh, you know, general ledger logs, um, it's just amazing to me to see where we're at now. It's just a great time to be in business. I agree. And how can AI improve volunteer support? So when we talk about volunteer engagement, AI can improve that support by matching your volunteer base with opportunities that they'll enjoy based on their history and personal interests. And AI tools can also help schedule volunteers, compose regular communications to make sure they're engaged and deliver thank you notes following a work session. As we all know, it's hard to remember and, you know, we are, have a very busy day. So having AI even create in regular communications to keep volunteers engaged in a personalized way is a tremendous help throughout your work workday. 
Absolutely, I completely agree. And it really, AI can help admins increase efficiency. So when we're thinking about administration, AI helps those nonprofit employees maximize their time by handling a variety of administrative tasks like scheduling meetings or transcribing meeting notes, sending email reminders, booking travel arrangements, and organizing digital documents. Yeah, a great example is, you know, AI can help reduce the number of repetitive tasks. We keep saying this by helping schedule meetings, transcribing meeting notes. I don't know if anyone has seen this before and we, we utilize this today in our meetings, but having a transcript of the communication throughout the meeting and then AI developing a, a meeting note task list of the actual items or what were the questions addressed is a tremendous help alongside with booking travel or even organizing documents. So an example is you can even utilize AI to provide a high level summary of meeting attendees, as I mentioned, and then record it and copy and paste it into chat GPT and ask it to summarize your notes to provide a synopsis of the meeting and the attendees as well. I mean, can you think about the amount of time that just that would save? That's incredible. Not having to, you know, spend all this time writing up a summary. Love yeah. That. I, years ago, I was, you, you know, I don't know if we've anyone on this call has done this, but you're tasked to provide meeting notes and you have to document what was talked about. You have to highlight the actual items and having AI do this today is amazing. So it's a great example and a, and a time saving and it keeps us all you know, in check of the tasks we need to do. So again, we can focus on those strategic tasks and the purpose of your business. Absolutely. So now let's talk about how AI helps really in the finance department, especially when it relates to automation. So nonprofit finance departments are stretched thin and talent shortages in the industry are affecting staffing. So many nonprofits are finding value in AI-powered AP automation software that streamlines processes and improves efficiency. So in the finance department, AI can extract and validate invoice data, automate invoice matching, and flag any anomalies for further review. That is powerful, especially if your AP process is more of in, in a manual state right now. Being able to let automation kind of take over for that is saves so much time. But AI can also help AP software route those invoices to the appropriate approvers based on predefined rules and workflows. It can also automatically generate financial reports, which again, it's all about saving time and reducing errors. I love that. And one of the things that's not listed here is AI can help identify and resolve data issues like duplicates and outdated information, especially from the accounts payable end. So that is tremendous as we, as you know, solutions like ourselves are able to flag this and notify you ahead of time before, before it's too late. So the state of AI in finance departments, let's look at this. So, you know, we asked, uh, we actually did a survey back in September of last year where we asked financial professionals, what type of AI is your finance department using? And by far, you can see that uh, the number one uh, type was natural language processing at 55%. But you've got a couple here with computer vision and natural language understanding close behind um, you know, machine learning, which is something we've been talking about, definitely utilized a lot today in the finance world, as well as object detection. Those are both key in AP automation, which Natalia is going to talk more about in a little while, but also like object recognition, optimization, forecasting. I mean, any thoughts, Natalia? I'm sure that you see this, you know, in the day to day like I do. Yeah, my, my thought, and you might have mentioned this, so sorry for repeating, but computer vision is the, the most popular AI tool for the finance department. So 
having computer vision see and extract the data from images, which I'll talk later on in the session, is just an improvement in accuracy and efficiency in data entry. So most of the finance leaders we surveyed, they said that their departments are using this like natural language processing, these tools to automatically extract financial data from documents like balance sheets to enter into their financial systems and spreadsheets. Yeah, I love that because, you know, we all think about when we think about automation, we think about the efficiencies gained. But really, when you also think about the huge reduction in errors, I mean, it's a big deal. And we hear that consistently from from folks in the finance world that have implemented automation is that they've seen those you know data entry errors go down. So very powerful. Excuse me. We also said, what are the main AI use cases in your finance department? So we found out that customer service, which I think we've all, you know, used AI when we're dealing with customer service at a variety of different types of businesses. But also, particularly, again, in the finance department, we're talking about 64 percent, both with fraud detection and risk management. So that is huge when we're in the you know, AP world specifically with fraud, especially on, you know, certain types of payments, paper checks in particular being so high right now and just risk management in general. I mean, that's kind of what our business is, you know, is to mitigate that, but also investment management, automation at 52% and compliance at 39%. And well, and we talked about chatbots earlier, but while customer service via chatbot is a well-known way that many organizations are using AI, there are other valuable cases like, like these that can improve operations in your finance department. So as Rhonda mentioned, some of the most impactful include these, again, reducing risks, data analysis, identifying opportunities and automation that streamline your processes. So important. I mean, what is that old saying? Uh, work smarter, not harder. And here, here, here's a perfect example of that in AI. Exactly. Um, but, you know, with AI, of course, comes some confusion and some concerns. We certainly hear, you know, both sides of it. Um, again, in the survey that we did last year, uh, we asked about that. Um, and we were found out that 71% of respondents said that they're establishing AI technology in-house instead of using public facing tools like ChatGPT. So that's good. But 29% said that they're outsourcing it. While 33% of respondents whose organizations are not currently using AI said that they're concerned, and especially as it relates to the regulation and safety of AI, um, and that's really been what's fueled their decision. And when we look here at the graph, we asked, if your organization is not currently using AI, what is contributing to that? And by far, 37% said lack of understanding. And then right after that, hesitation related to regulations and safety, cost of implementation. But I would say in particular, the lack of understanding, making sure that you're upskilling and training those individuals. If you're rolling out technology like this, you've got to make sure that people understand what they're doing and how to do it. So I think the rollout of this type of technology just goes hand in hand uh, with training. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. And like, we're all we're humans, so we are, you know, hesitant for change and the unknown. So we don't know until we know. So it's, it makes sense that the, the, the largest one is a lack of understanding and then the hesitation regarding the safety. But just a message with this, this topic is like with AI related lawsuits on the rise and, and heading headlines surrounding AI misinformation, it, it's no wonder that some companies are taking more measured approach to employing AI especially in finance departments where financial data and banking information must be protected. So understanding how to utilize it and, and utilizing it obviously well is going to be the, the, the big factor there for your organization. Yeah, absolutely. 
And we've got a quote here, and I absolutely love this. This is from David Terrain, who's actually a senior director um, here at Abbott Exchange. And we actually do a podcast called Net 30. And David said that, you know, any time that you bring innovation into the finance industry, that there will be some risk because of the heavy compliance regulations. And that businesses, especially those providing financial services, should focus on improving AI skills and understanding topics around bias and data privacy to ensure an equitable return on the investment. Love that. Just make sure all of your T's are crossed and your I's are dotted when you're going into something new. And finally, before I turn it over to Natalia, um, we're hearing, you know, organizations are supporting learning. And again, as I mentioned earlier, it's critical. So again, we go back to our survey of last year and, you know, we said, how is your organization supporting finance employees through the AI revolution and digital transformation? And I was very happy to see that 49% said that they're working on upskilling and reskilling opportunities and 28% with mentorship programs. And I love that 15% were open forums for feedback because I think, again, when you're rolling out new especially technology, it is so important that you have that open communication. But we also found out that 92% of organizations are helping learn, or excuse me, helping employees learn new AI and tech skills with education and engagement programs. And it really should be ongoing because we all know that technology changes and sometimes it seems to change at a rapid pace. So we've got to make sure that that training, that upskilling is evolving with the changes. And it's so important that upskilling, you know, when we're talking about that, that we understand that that refers to workplace training opportunities that give employees a chance to expand their skills and abilities. You know, it lets your employees grow. And in my experience over the last 35 plus years working in the finance industry, it's all about giving your employees a growth path. And again, all about learning. I love this. I think it makes perfect sense. What do you say, Natalia? The term learning you just you mentioned, I, the, some of the ways we also use AI is is internal learning as well. You know, AI can be a, a tool that can be leveraged in house at your organization to you train your current employees to improve their skill set, as Rhonda mentioned. And I also want to state that the finance leaders we surveyed in our 2024 trends survey reported that a lacking of understanding was the biggest hurdle preventing their organization from adopting AI. So to address this, you know, as Rhonda mentioned, we found 49% of our organizations are supporting finance employees with upskilling and reskilling opportunities using AI. So organizations are also encouraging tech-related education amongst teammates with mentorship programs and open forms for feedback. All right. So now I'm going to turn it over to you, Natalia, to talk about Avid Exchange. Thank you, Rhonda. So about Avid Exchange, who is Avid Exchange? Avid Exchange set out in the year 2000. So we have over 1,600 employees. We have five offices spread across the U.S. And our, our headquarters is actually in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a beautiful campus right near the downtown area and has a great view of downtown. So we are neighbors with Aparo. And we have offices spread across the US. So we have an office in Texas and, and Sandy, Utah. It's one in California, New Jersey. I'll, I wouldn't name them all, but we have the nation covered. We have over 8,800 8, customers and we integrate with 220 Five accounting system integrations. That isn't that is not a limitation. That means if you bring an accounting system we haven't integrated with, we can build an integration. With our payment network, Avid Pay has almost a million suppliers, a million vendors paid through the Avid Pay network today and over the last five years. This number continues to grow every single day as we bring in new suppliers to our network as payments are received by our customers. 
We've processed over $215 billion in spend under management in the year 2022. And Avid Exchange has been recognized as a leading business-to-business -business payment network in the middle market, recognized by Deloitte and Cloud100 as a 2021 honoree. So Avid Exchange, purpose built for the middle market. So we are the industry leading AP automation and payment services built for the nonprofit industry needs of middle market organizations. So that means we, we automate your invoice receiving, your invoice approval processes. You know, Rhonda mentioned some of the automation tools and AI, how, this, how our solutions can automatically send invoices to the appropriate teammates of your organization to perform their specific task, as well as the, the automation of any purchase order matching needs and the automation of a full payment service solution. The next purpose here is, as I mentioned earlier, is the largest network of unique suppliers. So that million number I was mentioning earlier, you know, we have over 965,000 supplier customers. We treat the suppliers, your vendors, as our customers, just like we would treat a customer utilizing one of our AP automation services. And the, and the suppliers within our database are of all sizes nationwide. We also have a deep domain expertise and, and strategic partnerships. Strategic partnerships with industry leaders like MasterCard and WISE and more. Avid Exchange has over 225 integration supporting nonprofits. So our solutions are highly integrated to our customers' core accounting system. Avid Exchange plays nicely with the accounting system because we will be a tool that is sending the accounting system the invoice information captured, as well as a tool that's retrieving your payables for us to facilitate on your behalf. These ERP systems are supporting organization requirements and their business needs. So we talked about AI in our session today. Now let's circle back to how Avid Exchange utilizes AI. And these are just a couple examples but throughout the presentation, we mentioned a few through utilizing some of the technology for, for your accounts payable department. So first one that we wanna call out is what is line item capture. So Avid Exchange's line item capture AI specific data like vendor invoice number, invoice data, et cetera. So what does that mean? When an invoice is received in your Avid Exchange solution or portal, we Avid Exchange is tasked with the technology utilizing AI to extract your invoice data. So when we talked about inaccuracies earlier, when it comes to you know, us as humans entering in invoice information into the accounting system, maybe we're entering the wrong number or putting in the wrong amount. Avid Exchange using AI captures a specific data off of the invoice, giving it an almost 100% accuracy. So that by the time that invoice is captured by our solution, it's going to be in, an, in a queue for your team to review it and code it and approve it. We also have some coding automation. So AI powered invoice automation coding tools that help organizations gain time and visibility. So the machine learning that we have provides quick and accurate data entry based on learned patterns. So when you first start utilizing one of our you know, invoice automation tools, the machine will learn how that invoice was coded previously. And it's learning every code entry, uh, even multiple invoice line item coding distribution detail alongside with any line item memo that you may have in inputted in the previous invoice that is going to be brought over to that new invoice. So when we talk about machine learning, the solution's gonna learn how you've picked up the coding from the past and pick up any changes to apply it to that new invoice, therefore decreasing the error rate that could happen today in, in manual entry if you are doing that directly into your accounting system, as well as just providing an accurate time savings for your team while they are in that invoice approval process. But that's just a couple examples. There's many other tools that Avid Exchange is utilize, utilizing AI to increase your efficiencies as well. So let's summarize. So increase your efficiency when you automate with Avid Exchange. First and foremost, reduce costs. 
So reduce both direct and indirect costs of end-to-end -end accounts payables. And when we think of costs, just think of, you know, if there are any user errors today, that's cost, that's time, that's salary in that user. Also, when we think about costs as far as the end-to-end -end process, how much time does it take to receive an invoice route it if you're routing invoices via email today and you're trying to keep track in your head of who has this invoice last i emailed this person three days ago our solution will improve that time by reducing the time and making sure that these invoices are going into the right queue for review and making sure that these invoices are accurate so you're not spending too much time fixing them or tracking where they are which leads to the second bullet which is improve visibility you know, gain back your visibility into all invoices and payments and help reduce fraud. Not only are, do, do our solutions provide these AI tools and time savings, but you're going to have a what I like to call a window. <laughs> you're going to have a window, the portal to view your, your invoices and payments at any time, anywhere you are. And that that does help reduce fraud as well as, you know, giving that uh, giving your greater team the, the access to see that information. Maintain control. Create a sophisticated workflow to ensure high quality and consistent processes. So with control is what we call workflows. Workflows are your current invoice approval processes today. So when we create your workflows, we're going to design them in the platform to either be identical to your processes today or efficient, more efficient because we're already reducing a few steps of entry. So maintain the control by us developing these uh, in, these workflows, these invoice approval processes, and be consistent with the process as well. Inc increasing efficiency by eliminating paper, manual task errors to, in, to move your business forward faster. And going back to what we, kept, what we kept saying earlier is focus on your strategic tasks. Let us handle those mundane steps of routing and capture. We just need you to come in validate, review, code, and approve. That's it. So eliminating paper and those manual tasks will increase your efficiency tremendously while scaling seamlessly. As you increase efficiency, your business will grow. So grow your business without having to scale your costs. And lastly, reduce risk. Reduce financial and reputational risks with e-payment options. With that, we have a full e-payment option solution here at Avid Pay as Avid Pay is a full service payment offering. So if you were to submit any, any, any open payments to our services, remember, as I mentioned earlier, that almost million dollar, million dollar, almost million vendor network, we will handle that as an extension of your AP team, providing you a window to view that payment status and proof of payment update. So what, is that, what does that all mean? So before automation with Avid Exchange, you have your invoice sent to you from your vendor, you're opening the mail, mail or you're opening your email, and then you're physically routing it. You're routing it via email, or you are walking over to someone's desk or any other manual task. I've heard cases where you know clients are mailing an envelope to an office to have that invoice information entered. So all these steps that may take place, receiving, opening, routing, then you're coding the invoice and entering into the accounting system. And then you're following up on that, uh, on that open payable as you're, as you're going to be the organist as today, if you're the organization cutting and mailing checks or processing your, your account, your uh, NACHA files, all that is going to be, you know, time, time consuming and potentially error prone with automation with Avid Exchange, our after visual here is where you see the Avid Exchange logo is where we're going to take over those manual tasks. And we're just going to leave you with these three simple steps. We need you to code or review the coding. Because remember, we talked about the AI tools of the system performing the coding based on the machine learning that you've provided as you've coded invoices to start. And then we need you to select the payments, the open, the open payables. And ultimately, Avid Exchange is going to integrate those invoices and the payments to the system. And then we need you to approve, approve the payment for us to process. But everything else, as far as receiving the invoices, routing for approvals, 
cutting and mail and cutting and mailing checks, but also producing other payment types like virtual cards and direct deposits, as well as payment follow up. We will do the payment follow up. We will also reach out to your vendors, make sure these payments are received and cashed in a timely manner. And then you again, going back to our theme here, you will have your time to do those strategic tasks. So what I want to end with is another quote. And with this quote, Dan Miracola, Director of Finance and Operations from Central Presbyterian Church says, when the pandemic hit, we were so heavily reliant on paper and we knew we had to modernize our technology. The reason we chose Avid Exchange was due to, need, due to the need to automate our approvals and to move payment processing and check cutting out of our hands. All right, so let's open up the Q&A in a final poll. Thank you, Natalia and Rhonda. Um, what would you like to do first, the, the Q&A and then do the poll? Let's start the Q&A. All right, sounds good. Um, so for everyone, feel free to drop in your questions in the Q&A box. Um, if you'd like to say your question out loud, just raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, but in the meantime, we do have a couple questions already. Um, the first question is, I see the benefits of automation, but how can I make the case to my leadership team? Rhonda, coming from yeah. your experience, <laughs> this is going to probably oh. near and dear to your heart. <laughs> Absolutely, as I was trying to unmute. Thank you, Natalia. <clears throat> so, yes, I love this. And Avid Exchange can actually help you with that. So we're able to um, actually work with you to create an ROI that you can share with your management team. And I always tell people that, you know, if you talk to your peers, I'm sure that at least half of them, sometimes more, are already automated and can already walk you through that process. But there's all kinds of information available that shows the uh, importance, the drops in uh, errors with automation, the reduction in fraud. So really just do your homework, but you can definitely work directly with our team to help you make that case. Yeah. Um, another question is, how do you handle vendor onboarding? Yeah, so vendor onboarding, we have the full payment service network. So when you were to, you are to submit a payment to Avid Pay, again, through the integration with our solutions, we have a full service that is going to reach out to any vendor that is not in our network. So remember, we have almost a million vendors in network today. So if they're not in, in our network, we do an initial onboarding by validating the vendor, making sure they are a valid, valid vendor and collect any detail if they were to choose one of our e-payment options, if they want a direct deposit, that's where we also collect their bank account detail and hold that information within our database. But by onboarding vendors, that means the vendors in our network, they're now a customer of ours, just like you would be a customer of ours. And the next time you send us a payment or any other customer sends us a payment for that vendor, they're in network. So we have a dedicated full service to do this. We also provide vendors their own portal to have visibility and a way to communicate with us, also utilizing AI chat boxes. But great question. Awesome. AI is certainly amazing. Um, another question is around the cost. So can you talk a little bit about the cost for the AP solution? The cost will be dependent on your transactional volume. Now, Rhonda and I are not in sales, but we, you know, we understand the structure. So the way you'll be presented cost is based on your monthly transactional volume. There's a cost per invoice transaction, and then there's a cost per payment transaction. The implementation fee is not a, an, an immense, you know, implementation as if you are familiar with any implement, implementations of a full accounting system. It's not anywhere close to that, but there is a small implementation fee. So a startup fee on 
configuring your platforms and then a transactional fee per transaction submitted to our system. And I would just add to that <clears throat> with our payment um, process that customers have the ability to earn rebates back on e-payments, qualified e-payments. So a lot of times that greatly helps reduce the cost of the service, which to Natalia's point, point is already, you know, pretty nominally priced and based on the number of transactions. Great. Thank you so much. Um, I think that hits all of our questions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the poll up. So I've just launched it, so that should have popped up into your screen. Um, so the question is, would you like to hear from Avid Exchange? Um, there is yes, you can receive a demo for a $100 MasterCard gift card. Um, there's a selection about just sending me more information and then one on I'm just here to learn. So please select the right one. And then there's also a survey in the chat. Um, please also click on that to complete the survey. And then we'll give it a couple more seconds. Well, I do want to take a moment and thank the Avid Exchange team, Rhonda, Natalia, wonderful presentation, um, amazing job just showing high level how AI is impacting all different departments and within nonprofits. And it's really cool to see around the automation, specifically around the finance piece. Um, so thank you so much for your time and for coming in and sharing your expertise. Really appreciate that. Um, all the participants, please expect an email from me. Um, it'll include the link to this recording as well as copy of the slide deck for you to review. Um, if you did select that you would like to schedule a demo, I'll be sure to connect you with the Avid Exchange team as well. Um, if there are any other questions that come up, don't hesitate just to reply to that email. We'll be happy to um, help make sure you get your questions answered. All right, well, that's it for today. Thank you everyone for coming in and hopefully see you next time. Bye everyone. Bye, thank you. Thank you.